in a very head scratching move, the Baltimore Ravens have released pass rusher, who we know they need even more of, defensive end Yannick Ngakwe. They cut him today. But why? For what? What's the reason? We're going to get into that shortly. Before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn the notifications on, and like y'all have been and going absolutely bonkers with. I don't even know if anybody even used the word bonkers anymore, but I'm using it right now for y'all. Y'all been going bonkers with leaving a like on the video, so keep on going crazy with it. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Also, check out powerhousewheels.com for all of your rims and tires needs. They'll take care of y'all. And if you look down below, you get a discount code. You get a discount code. So hit up powerhousewheels.com and tell them that engraving sent you. Now, with Yannick Ngakwe, he is no longer, at least for now, a Baltimore Raven. Let's read the report from Adam Schefter. He said, the Baltimore Ravens are waving defensive end Yannick Ngakwe per source. The Ravens want to resign him to their practice squad should he clear waivers. And it's like, whoa, hold up. They releasing Yannick Ngakwe? Like, you got some other ro roster options that you could go through. You got some other players that you could cut. You could even do the old wink, wink, injury reserve. Something like you, you could do, you got some other options. Why Yannick Ngakwe? Well, first and foremost, Adam Schefter did say that this is for a uh, possibility of Keaton Mitchell making his comeback. And that's what we've all been anticipating when Keaton Mitchell is going to return. It's looking like it is going to be tonight. So this opens up a roster spot for him uh, to be on the squad. So that, that's the great news in this. That's, the, that, that's not a head scratcher right there. Like we all been looking forward to Keaton Mitchell coming back, especially everything that we saw from him last year. And we were just envisioning, oh my goodness, Keaton Mitchell with a Derrick Henry and Justice Hill. So don't forget about Justice Hill. So, oh man. It, <laughs> I can't wait to see Keaton Mitchell. Now, with Keaton Mitchell, speaking of him, let's temper our expectations. We know everything that he did last year. We know what he's capable of. We know what he can do. But I would not anticipate him being back in the Ravens be like, all right, Keaton Mitchell, 10 carries for you. I just don't see that. I think they'll ease him in, and I think tonight, I don't think he gets over five carries tonight. That's just me, though. I ain't the offensive coordinator. I ain't nothing. Like, hey, I ain't nothing but a podcaster, so I, I, I don't know nothing about that. But I, I would not anticipate him getting more than five carries tonight. Something that we did see, say yesterday in the video, and, and I saw Jeff Zrebic talk about it today. I said, okay, we think on the same page, man. But uh, we talked about how we could see the Baltimore Ravens using Keith Mitchell at kick return because they cut Chris Collier, who was our starting kick return. It was Collier and Justice Hill. So now could we possibly see Keith Mitchell and Justice Hill as our kick returners? Maybe. Maybe, but I wonder if, if they would, like his first game back, if they would put him there. You never know. So we'll see what happens with him. But anyway, back to Yannick Ngakwe. Why him? Why would they release him? And I know a lot of Ravens fans are wondering, like, why him and why not somebody like Eddie Jackson? Eddie Jackson's been out there. He hasn't looked too good. It's been rough. So why not? You just benched Eddie Jackson last week, too. And it obviously worked out. So why wouldn't you cut him? Well, salaries are a real thing. And the money is a real thing. And if you are on the roster prior to week one, then your salary is guaranteed. That's whether you get cut or not. So say, for instance, they wanted to cut Eddie Jackson. If they were going to release Eddie Jackson like a lot of Ravens fans would have wanted them to do, then they could. But they will still have to pay him everything that they owed him. Oh, well, Yann Yannick Ngakwe. Let's read this report <laughs> Excuse me from, <coughs> excuse me, from Brian McFarlane. He said, Yannick Ngakwe was not on the roster in week one, so he's not entitled to the full season termination pay. <coughs> Excuse me. My apologies, y'all. He said, uh, he's not entitled to a full season termination pay or fully guaranteed vet salary. He is entitled to in-season termination pay, 35% of his scheduled salary, but since he's already been on the roster for four weeks, it means only an additional $10,944 added to the cap. So nothing, pretty much. But he did say this. <clears throat> Excuse me. I need some water. He said, that said, Yannick Ngakwe, uh, if he is claimed off for of waivers, uh, the new team acquires his contract and there will be no termination pay charge to the Baltimore Ravens. Now, um, basically what he's saying, hey, if nobody picks him up off of waivers, Ravens got to pay him. If somebody picks him up off of waivers, Ravens ain't got to pay him. Very risky business by the Baltimore Ravens right here. Um, you, <laughs> yeah, this is very risky business. We know how the pass rush has been. Uh, we know that it's been rough. We know that this has been a lot of big yikes moments or whatnot, but I guess Ravens are really saying like, look, we are willing to take that risk. And, and risk has been a big word with the Baltimore Ravens this year. You look at them last year, they won an AFC championship game. What did they do? Whole new offensive line, three new starters, 
at both guard spots and one of the tackle spots. Brand new starters. Just, oh my goodness. Wow. You you just an AFC champion. You really need to redo this whole offensive line? They said, yeah. Also, last year, AFC championship game. Number one defense, triple crown defense, da da da. Brand new defensive coordinator and a defensive coordinator that has never been a defensive coordinator before was like, oh. Now, we get it. Like, you couldn't keep Mike McDonald. You weren't going to keep Mike McDonald. So, you had to get a new defensive coordinator, but they got a, like, a brand new, brand new defensive coordinator with Zach Orr. Risky business. So, Ravens are used to doing some risk this year. So, this is just another one. It's another one. Now, I wish the other day they would have been willing to risk a couple more draft picks or something, get so another pass for us. But anyway... It is what it is. It's okay. Hey, and we hoping that Tredavious White, he does his thing when he does play for the Baltimore Ravens. And speaking of Tredavious White, he is not expected to play in tonight's game. That's no surprise. That's no shock at all. He got traded to the team on Tuesday. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens, they play on Thursday. So to expect him to play right away, nah. Unless they were dealing with like some crazy injury at that position. But even still, nah. So no problem with that. After this, they got a nice 10-day break. Hopefully, they get the win tonight. Then they got the 10-day break. Everybody can relax, recuperate. Speaking of recuperate, Isaiah Likely. Isaiah Likely is not playing in this game with his hamstring injury. Um, I'm not sure exactly when he sustained the hamstring injury. I know I've seen some Ravens fans say that it happened late in the game on when he was on the punt coverage team. And I was like, Ugh, what's Isaiah Likely doing now? He did make a nice tackle now. He did. But him being out there is just like, ooh, I, I just hate seeing him out there. I hate, I hate seeing Kyle Hamilton out there covering punts. I'm like, man, what Kyle Hamilton doing? Get him off. The but anyway, um, I don't know when the injury happened, but the injury happened. So Isaiah likely sitting out tonight, but hopefully it's one of them things where, where ju just with rest. Because, you know, hamstrings can be very, very tricky. But hopefully just with rest, Isaiah likely he can be good to go when we get back from this 10-day break. So it'll be nice for him to just take it easy. Take it easy, likely. And we'll see you again. So we play next after this game. I think it's the Pittsburgh Steelers, I believe. Um, but anyway, uh, with Yannick Ngakwe, will he even clear waivers? Will he make it through waivers? <laughs> I don't really think so. I, I don't. Um, teams, like, they need pass rushers more than ever nowadays. And even just to, to have another one. Like, look at the Steelers. The Steelers, they have one of the bad, best pass rushers in the league. And T.J. Watt, one of the most dominant, disruptive pass rushers in all the NFL. They also got Alex Highsmith. He's a baller, too. They also got Cam Hayward, who us Ravens fans are very familiar with. See, they got a nice little defensive line, man. What did they do? They just added Preston Smith. <laughs> These boys, all, we, we looking for pass rushers. We are look, searching for a pass rush. We've been looking for it for weeks. Steelers been had it. They already got it. And they got depth, too. They got high-quality depth. What did they go do? They went and added even more. Added even more. So, you see what I'm saying? Like, this is a very pass-rusher-friendly league, and their teams, even if they got somebody, even if they got somebody who's like that. Oh, yeah, Steelers got Patrick Queen, too, another pass-rusher. I forgot about him. So, they got T.J. Watt. They got Patrick Queen. They got Cam Haywood. They, they, they got um, Alex Highsmith. Then they added... Preston Smith on top of all of that. And we, we still trying to find our, our pass rush identity. So, ooh, ooh. Anyway, um, yeah, so this move is a, it was a head scratcher. Even with, I know I get the whole salary thing. I get it's not fully guaranteed since he wasn't on the roster after week, oh, before week one. But still, I just, I, I hope this doesn't come back to bite them. But um, now it, it's really, and we're going to start seeing tonight, man. Um, hopefully Travis Jones is fully healthy. Uh, because we need him big time. Namdi Matabike, we need him to step up big time. Um, but we need uh, all our Nigerian nightmares, man. Shout out to Adafe Away, uh, David Ajabo. I wonder if he'll be active tonight. But we also got the Canadian sensation, that boy Tavius Robinson. I, I want to see if the Baltimore Ravens are going to give him even more playing time. Because maybe last week I seen a lot of Ravens fans saying, oh, Tavis Robinson got them two sacks last week, and Ravens were like, oh, no, we don't need no pass rusher. So a lot more is just going to be put on the plates of the guys that we already have. Oh, oh there's Kyle Vannoy, too. So we got some guys in-house that have made plenty of plays over the courses of their careers before. Now it, it's time to bring even more. It, it's time to bring even more. It's time to get even better, and it's time to get uh, much more productive. I, I have been seeing a lot of conversation um, amongst Ravens fans saying, hey, we, we like top five in sacks. 
And that's crazy when you think about it. Like, we've been talking about the pass rush, how Ravens have no pass rush, but they top five in sacks. How does that work? I've been seeing people say, hey, they, they coverage sacks. That's why. And it's a mix of different things. I think early on this season, they, they were just hot. They were really hot early this season, and then it just fell off out of nowhere. It could be like the timing of Travis Jones' injury. But I will say, uh, this, this is where numbers, they don't tell the whole story. Because we watch it week in, week out. We see it every single game pretty much. Quarterbacks are back there chilling. Quarterbacks are just, just sitting, sitting back there relaxing. I saw one Ravens fan today saying these quarterbacks, they, they got so much time in the pocket. It's, it's like they're waiting for a new iPhone. They're in line waiting for a new iPhone. That's how much time they got. And, and it has been bad. It's been rough seeing it. But now it's time for that to get fixed. So hopefully that starts tonight. We'll see how it goes, team. Keep it clean. I will see you in the live stream. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all again. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on so you don't miss anything. Not a single video, not a single live stream, not a single update, not a single anything on our Baltimore Ravens. And also, don't forget to check out powerhousewheels.com and use a discount code so you can get some money off when you get them rims to keep your ride nice and team. Keep it clean. We out.